Hi guys, how are y'all today? I hope everyone is doing well. Good to see you again this week. Sorry I was out last week, but it was a good week taping. I have a splash screen on front of my screen because I was trying to open up Canvas Workspace before we started. So let me get logged into there and that splash screen may go away. Oops, evidently not. There we go. Let's see if I can remember my password. <laughs> And so, yes, it's another busy week with Sewing Machines Live, Sewing Machines Plus Live. Evidently, I can't remember my password. I'm keeping going here. Fiddle D. Let's see if this is it. Huh. All right, let's just close it. <laughs> I cry, Uncle. <laughs> I'll figure it out in a minute. So, Good to see y'all. Missed you last week. It was a crazy week last week. Um, long, long days, but I think we did a good job. We finished on time, which is always good. And Shirley, good to see you. <laughs> and don't want to miss anything. There you go. Got them both going. Who's on right now? I'm not sure. I know that Heather's got another session this afternoon. I don't know if she's gone yet. I've got two tomorrow. So if you want to learn how to hoop hats and you want to learn more about the PRS 100 or as we call it the persona, I'll be on again tomorrow morning and then again in the afternoon. So it's fun. So Francie, good to see you. You finally made it live here with us. Yay. Tell everybody where you're from. Let them know you're having a good time. So one next to them. So good to see you, Judy. It's been a while. Um, and hi, Velvet. Good to see you again. And Miss Pat is back. from. She's just down the road from me. And there you are, Miss Ger Geraldine. That's a nice name. That's very interesting. Good to see you today. All right, guys. Um, first question up was, where do those files go if you can't locate them in your blocks, in your block library? So we're going to start with advanced design advanced quilt design software and i'm going to show you where those little guys are hidden from are hidden be now keep in mind you don't want to delete stuff out of here because if you do these are your program files so i don't usually like to show you where things are but um in this case if it's not playing nice with you then let's give you the give you the way to find them so that you know and I'm going to tell you one little trick about the advanced quilt design software. If you can't get your designs to save in your block library automatically, what I would tell you is to save out, export the project. So that's where we're going to stop. Um, Wisconsin is hotter than blazes. You know, it was very chilly there this weekend, Lois. I was just in your neck of the woods. I was in Madison this weekend, Middleton technically, and it was chilly there, but I, evidently, y'all warmed up when I left. We are almost 98 degrees here today, which is shocking. Um, I'm really rather, I think it's cooler down at my dad's in Florida than it is here today. So way, way, way not fun. All right. So let's look and see where things get hidden, If where your blocks go if you want to save one, if you're not wanting to export the project, because I think that may be a little... I was waiting on an update for that to come out and evidently they have not pressed that update yet. So I'm going to show you where your blocks actually go. So let me come and share my screen. Why is that not sharing my screen? Oh, I actually have to add it to the screen. Okay. So let's come over here to find our block here. So let's go to our block designing tool and let's just do new block. And we're going to just make something easy. So I'm going to just kind of lasso. We'll make a, a real simple block here. I'm going to lasso these pieces and we're going to combine them. We're going to make them pink. And no, it's not because pink is my favorite color. It's just because that's the one I clicked on. So let's grab those and unite those and make them a peachy color. And we're going to grab these and unite these. And we'll make them that same pink color. So real simple block. Nothing challenging about this one. Let's unite those and make them the same peachy color. Okay. So if you go up and you do file, 
saved to library and it doesn't show up in your library. Okay, so let's say I put this in as basic block. If yours doesn't happen to show up in your library, so there's my basic block and it is in my library, but if it doesn't, the easiest way to get it there is to export the project. So if you choose export project and you call this basic block and you save quilt block file and save to library, it should automatically save that to that place. Of course, you do have to choose a folder to export your other files to. So let me go data and put it in my Facebook Live projects. And we'll just say export. Okay, so that's going to export everything for me into a file folder that I've got, but it will also export that basic block over here into my block library. Okay. But let's say you didn't know where that is. If you go up to the application button, which is the little quilt looking thing up there, and you go to save as, if you go to your PC and you go to the C drive, you have to have your hidden files unhidden. So this is in program data. There's my program data and we're looking for pace setter, advanced quilt design, and then your library. And if you go into the blocks library, you will see my blocks. That is where all of your blocks will be placed. Okay. So that is where you'll find them. And that that's where you would save them if they're not automatically going to your block library. And I'm not sure what you got going on, Sandra, but that's where they go. Okay, so anytime you're hunting for the, you have to have your hidden files showing those. So if you're looking in Windows Explorer and you go to view, um, let's see here, show this right here, hidden item, hidden items right there. You want to make sure that your hidden items are showing. And if they are, then you'll see that. Okay, so that was my first question of the day. I didn't have many questions today. You guys were very kind to me, so I'm going to do something a little different. We'll play with um, BES4 today, and let's start. Um, what am I trying to say? We'll do something for 4th of July. Since Memorial Day's passed, let's play with 4th of July. All right. Oh, well, before I do that, Coco. Okay. I can't do it in PE Design 10 because my PE Design 10 does not work on Windows 11. I am not sure what's going on with that. It could be because I have special dongle and it didn't work. So um, let's see here. Um, if you are doing a split design, and you want to do 17 by 20 in the multi-hoop function. It's going to be very similar. So let me change to inches for a second so I can figure out what hoop is your basic, what, what is your basic hoop? What is the biggest hoop that you're using, Coco? Because that's the first thing I need to know. When you choose custom size, you got to choose which hoop you're going to have. When you, when you choose Custom hoop, you want to use your largest size hoop that you have so that you don't have to hoop as often. So I need to know which size, section size hoop. So what's your largest hoop, Miss Coco? Give me that and I'll say that. Um, 8 by 12. So come down here where it says section size for hoop and that will be your 12 by 7.7 7 and 4 eighths. Oh, actually, let's switch to this, this hoop. And that'll be seven and four eighths by 11, 4, 11.14. So now you want 17 by 20. So let's increase this until it reaches 20. Okay. And then this is going to be 17. Oops. So you notice I'm going to have some partial, oh, sorry guys, <laughs> I'm 
Obviously, I'm not on my game today. So let me show this again. Thanks for thanks for asking that question. Let's come back in here. We're going to choose custom size. Down here, we need to choose. Let's change it to a a single needle machine and let's choose 7.48 by 11.41. Um, you ready? So now let's increase the size over here to the width to where it's 20 or 17, whichever direction you want to be oriented. Let's go 17 that way. And let's go 20 this way. So now you've got your hoop set up. You're going to be um, partial hoops on the bottom and partial hoops on the last section. Click OK. So now bring your design in from wherever it is. Uh, I'm just going to draw something so you can see how this works. I'll draw a big old circle. I will explain the red dotted lines here in just a second. All right. So now that we've designed it, you would need to stay within your space parameters here. So this is our hoop. The white space is my hoop. Normally, I make sure I have full hoops. That's just my preference. That way I can position it where I want to. So if I were going for full, full hoops, I would go in here and change back to metric to make sure I get the full width and the full height. Then I can manipulate my design around. And I increase my hoop size to where I have six, three across and th two down. That way I have m maneuverability, I guess I should say. It should be like 570. Yep, 570. There we go. So now you'll see that you have room to manipulate this and have the split be where you want it to be. So you can move it different directions. The red dash lines indicate your split. Okay, that's where it's going to divide the design up. All right. Now, if we come down here to the bottom, I'm going to click off of everything and we're going to come down here to where it says property, design properties and click on that little icon. This is what it's going to sew in the first hoop. So if I don't like that, I can change, I can move it, but that's what it's, I actually have to show you this split screen here. So that's what it's going to show in hoop, sew in hoop number one. So it's going to sew your colors and then it's going to sew a basting stitch across and down this way and this way. The next line, it's going to sew the basting stitch on this side first, and then it'll sew this section. And then it'll sew the basting stitch on this side and along the bottom. The next section, it'll sew your basting stitch first here. And then it'll sew the fill and the outline. And then it'll sew the basting stitch at the bottom. On your next row, it'll stitch that first basting stitch so you know how to line it up. And then it'll stitch the basting stitch along the side to match it up to the next piece. The next section will sew your basting stitch here and here first so you can match up your sections and then it'll sew this basting stitch right here. The last section will sew your basting stitch here and here and then it'll sew your fill. You'll notice there's no basting stitch at the end of this. The not defined color is the basting stitch. So now that I've explained that, let me come back over here and explain how I actually stitch these. What I will do is I will put a piece of water soluble adhesive stabilizer in my hoop and I lay my project down on top of it. And I will stitch out section number one with the basting stitches. Take that out. I leave my stabilizer underneath there and cut up around it. I do not release it all. I don't cut all the way up close to it. I just get enough away to where I can hoop the next section. Then I hoop another piece of the adhesive water soluble stabilizer. Now, and any stabilizer you want to remain float it underneath the, bed, the, underneath the hoop and between it and the bed of the machine. Next section, I stitch my basting stitch first. And then I take the knots that are on the project 
because the basting stitch will knot at the beginning and not at the end. And I lay them down on top of that. And then I will use the plus minus key on my machine to fast forward and drop my needle in those holes to make sure they match up. Once they match up, then I can go ahead and smooth my project out. I don't lay it on there really good until I've made sure that it's going to land in the exact holes that I need it to land in. Then I stitch that section and stitch the basting stitch that's going to come at the end of it. Once again, take it out, trim around it, but leave enough stabilizer on there to where it doesn't suck in. And then hoop it, another piece of stabilizer, stitch that basting stitch line. And I usually do stitch it in red so that I can either red or black so that I can see those lines really well and see my knots on both ends. Line up your basting stitch knots. Then once you fast forwarded to make sure that it's going to drop in the same holes, then smooth it out. If it doesn't, then just lift it and shift it slightly. Don't smooth it down on there real good until you get it in the position you know you need it. Okay. And so that, that's what I would, that's how I personally do it. If I would start with something small, so do like an outline of a circle on a small project. Let's say you do four hoops of a four by four, make a circle that's going to fit in those four hoops. Test it and learn how that works and then expand it to something bigger there. That is the easiest way to learn it is just to have an outline of a circle and match it up along the way. That's the way you learn the process, especially when you're not just going across one way. If you're because if you're just going this way, no big deal. Or if you're just going this way, no big deal. But when you're trying to match a top row and a bottom row and multiple hoopings, that's when things get more challenging. Yes, the holes in the basting stitch are what I'm lining up to. I drop my needle to make sure that the needle is dropping in the exact same spot that it dropped on the first section. Once it does that, it's going to be in the right spot. Okay, so that's what I would that's what I would tell you to do. So uh, I, once again, I apologize for forgetting to share my screen to begin with. Evidently, I am not. I'm out of practice with my week off. <laughs> so. Um, The, the registration marks are the basting stitches, Tana. Um, it's not tying off real good or you're pulling it up too far. So you have to make sure that it's tying on. If it isn't, back up. Actually, the easiest way to make sure your basting stitch is going to tie off is to pull the thread, the bobbin thread up to the top and hold both of them at the same time while it does the tie off to begin with. OK, that's the easiest way to make sure because those are long stitches. Sometimes it misses, it doesn't grab that thread quite as much as you want it to do. So pull your bobbin thread to the top, hold on both of them and let it do it. OK, so be, you know, be careful with those basting stitches. You do want to make sure that they stay there. And like I said, leave as much of that stabilizer on the back of your project as you can. Just cut out, cut the paper part away that you've left in the center. So, I mean, that you've left around the outside edges. Just cut that part away, leave the rest of it underneath there, and then go to the next section. All right. Um, let me see here. <laughs> Y'all are so funny. How long did it take me to notice that I was doing that? Uh, about four minutes. Let me see here. Um, Yvonne, you can't remove... Okay. I'm not sure why can't I remove overlap or whole sewing with placing text on the embroidery applique wizard because it's not uh, well first of all you can't remove holes from text it I mean whole sewing doesn't work with text you have to convert to outlines first that would be my first statement but remove overlaps doesn't work with appliques itself because it doesn't see that is a fill area and that's what remove overlaps works with. So if you've seen me do this before, I use split it point instead of the remove overlaps. So I'll show I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Let me share my screen. <laughs> Let's hit new page and get rid of that. 
And let's go back to a standard size hoop. Okay, so um, evidently I must have been using a font that only, there was an outline only font last time. So let's see what we've got going on. Text, yep, that was an outline only font. Here we go. So here's my text. I'm going to go back to default of full comp. I was playing with something yesterday. And let's say we add a shape and we'll turn it into an applique. Okay, so I'm going to cut this and paste it so it's on the front. And that way I don't have to reorder it in the sewing order window. And we're going to place our P right there. So since an applique is multiple layers and it doesn't see that as a fill area, what do you do is you ungroup it first and then you grab the top section, grab the select point tool. I usually add a point where I want it to start splitting, right mouse click and split that at point. Go to the opposite end of that where you want it to split, right mouse click, split at point. And then here's your section that you just removed. So click it and click the select patterns icon and press delete. And that covering stitch is now removed. So that's how I get around it. Okay. Um, does that make sense, Yvonne? Did I answer your question? that make sense? Um, okay, so it doesn't let you do that. Um, what you can do is convert your text to outlines and copy it. Okay, I know what you want. Hold on. Let's see here. Let's delete this, delete this, delete, delete. Okay. So you're wanting to do the embroidery patch wizard and you're wanting to leave the holes on the inside. Well, we're going to go ahead and just, I, I, we're going to kind of get grasp what you want, I think. So I'm going to go to my section here and we are going to select it and I'm going to change it to a net fill stitch. Oops, net fill stitch. And I'm going to grab that one right there and make it small. And we'll move it to the front. Okay, so how to, what's your workaround? So let me change the color of this so that you can see it a little bit easier. Okay, so now we've got two sections here, right? And you're wanting to get rid of that underneath your text, although I'm not real sure why you're wanting to take it out because that will help keep those loops down underneath it. But if you want to, here's what you do. Grab your text, copy it. So go to your home tab or control C on your keyboard is what I normally do and leave that hanging out there in space. So copy first. So you're not gonna see the copy it's just hanging out there in space. And then we're going to convert the text that's down here to outline. Once you've converted your text to outline, you can then come in and select the parts, select patterns icon, go to your home tab, modify overlap, either set whole sewing or remove overlaps, either one. And then you can set this to not sew. Okay. So same thing here. Select Patterns, come up, Modify Overlap, Set Whole Sewing, come and select this, change it to Not Sewn, and then we want this to sew. So we want that to go to our net fill stitch in the green color. There we go. Grab your P and your background, Select, click your Home tab, select Patterns, Modify Overlap, Set Whole Sewing. 
turn on your centerpiece, change it to green, and turn off the stitches for the P. Oops, wrong P. Undo. Off the stitches for this P. There we go. So now click this, click this, select patterns, home tab, modify overlap, set whole sewing. Once again, turn off the sewing for that P. I could have put, typed in USA, huh? That might have been faster. And we're going to change this to net fill and change the color back to green. Last one. Select patterns. Go to the home tab. Modify overlap. Set whole sewing. And turn off the stitching for the yellow. Um, for the Y, sorry. So now you have embossed lettering. So your fabric will show through like that. Yes. So if you're wanting to emboss, do embossed text, that's a good, easy way to do that. And if you don't want to do embossed text and you want your stitches to sit down on top of it, Control V will paste that text back down on top. So that is, that would be embossed lettering. So that, that's how you would get the embossed look. You could also change that to a different motif instead of the net fill stitch. Net fill does a really nice job of it. But I also have been known to use, if we're not, if we undo what I just did and we just go with this text. So let me come and grab these pieces. Actually, let's come just grab the fills. I have been known to go to motif stitch and sewing attributes. And let's pick our pattern here. Wait a minute. Let me pull it over. Which pattern is it that I normally use? Where are you? Um, this one right here. Motif 31, maintain aspect ratio and make it as small as you can make it. That one does a very nice job as well. So did that answer your, your um, question, Yvonne? So yes. That's, yeah, you, you're, if you'd have said embossed lettering, I'd have been all over it. <laughs> so I, I get it. <laughs> so yes, you can certainly do that that way. Um, and that's an easy way to do it. I think we probably could have done most of the letters all at one time, but that gives you the practice of doing it. Let's go and see. Let's go back and we'll start again and see if we can grab them all. Let me go to, let's just do new page. And I should be able to paste my text back down. There we go. Embroidered patch wizard. Okay. Turn on its fill stitch. Net fill. Change to this one. Go down. And take it to sew first. All right. So now let's convert our text to outline. Not going to let me. Convert to outline, and now let's ungroup the whole kit and caboodle. Evidently, it's grouped itself, so let's ungroup. Now, we should be able to, let's see if we can grab all of these letters at one time. And this, select patterns, go to the home tab, modify overlap, set whole sewing. There you go. It worked for all of them at one time. You can, you want to turn these off, and then turn these on. and change your color to the same color. And there you go. So that's a sweet, easy way to do that. I will tell you, um, the thicker the letter, the better your, better your um, design's gonna work. So, it, and it does do a very nice effect, especially if you're doing on a fluffy towel. So it does a very nice one. Coco, I have no idea what that, what your question is there. Um, there's not a flip, there's not a mirror, <clears throat> mirror option in my design center. So, uh, that I, at least I can't remember off the top of my head, but there is a mirror option here. Okay. 
Um, <clears throat> now, where was I going? Now that I've answered that question, let me go look and see what else we've got. Linda, did I just answer your question? Question. Okay, so the same way that I just did, you, except for you would copy it to the clipboard and paste your text back down. So it's the same process, just you're actually landing your letters back on top. So you, you exact same process. Okay. Now, let's go see here. And let's play a little bit. So, this can be, what I'm about to do can be done in either BES Blue or BES 4, but we haven't played with these text options in a while. So, I thought I'd give you all a little treat today and we'll play with some spiral text. So, let's come in here and let's type in happy... Now, you'll notice that only my uppercase letters are showing. Would you like to know why? Because I have two color sports fonts selected, and that is not one that has both upper and lower case. So, let's see here what we've got. Let's do a small font today. And let's zoom in and see what we've got. Out just a hair. Okay. So, if you want that to spiral more, you're going to take this little dot right here and you're going to squeeze it in. See how that works? That allows you to actually play with it and squeeze it to where you want it to go. That little black dot right there is your squeeze option. Now, let's say we don't want Bambino. Let's see if we can get something a little bit bigger. How about we just do blocks and see what happens? So, let's zoom out. And let's make that opening a little bit bigger. And now we should be able to put a design in the center of it. Since we are in that season for having things to decorate, let's see what we can get in here. There is, well, come on. There we go. Thank you. There is a design in your accent designs in both BES Blue and BES 4. And I do believe Simply Applique, although Simply Applique, you cannot do the spiral text. This little accent design right here is a cute little design. So you can you could stick it in the center if you wanted to, or if you want to have some real fun with it, you can come and take it out and you can go to your tools tab. Go to the arrange and you can arrange it on a circle. And if you notice, you can actually we can play with range arranging on the circle. So right now I've got a count of six and they're ran, it kind of rotates them as they go. If we want to change that, we can come and change the angle. And as you change the angle, it changes the number that's going to go in there. That's not really what I wanted to do. So I'm going to go back down to 60. And we'll go to 59 and then 60. There we go. This right here is the overall angle. So you'll notice that they all change when I change this one. So if you want them following the circle, play with this little, this angle down at the, this goes for all of them. And I think I want 60%. So now they're following a circle. If you want them all facing outward, you can, let's rotate the opposite direction. Um, and, oh, there we go. Oops, went too far. There we go. Now all of my stars are facing the inside and my fireworks are going out. I'm going to go ahead and apply it and click OK. Right now, color set sort is automatically set. When I click OK, you'll notice they are all there. Now I can take my text and let's see here what we've got. Let's make my font smaller right now. It's 0.79. Let's see how small we can go. We can go down to 0.2. Let's take it down to 0.5 and see what we get. I like that better and I should be able to tighten up my text. So I'm going to come grab my text tool and grab that little circle and pull it inward. But I still need a little bit more 
small. So let's go down and go down to 0.25 and apply. Okay, so that's somewhere in between. Let's see what 0.4 does. That's pretty close to what I want. Um, so let's go 0.35. Perfect. So now you have your 4th of July. Let's look at it in 3D draw and easy peasy. You can rotate the design if you want. And I kind of like that right there. And if you wanted multicolored text, we haven't done this in a while. This little button right here is your multicolored text tool. When you do that, it automatically adds the tilde between all of the letters. If I apply that and I decide, you know, that's not what I want. I really only want fourth changed. I can come in here and put the tilde key, which is this little swirly thing at the beginning of that and the end of fourth. So it switches back and click apply. So notice how now just my fourth has changed and what I can come in and do is then select that font. So let's come over here and see what we've got. Plus sign, plus sign. Here's that color. We can change that to red to match. And there you go. Let's change the blue part, these two blues to this blue. And now everything matches. So you could come in and play and have yourself a fun little 4th of July activity with that, with that one. Now, I also have another trick I want to show you here in just a second. But let me come and see if there are in, any questions. No, your letter is on the bottom, Linda. I'm not sure. You're, you're going to have to explain that one a little bit more. So that is an easy 4th of July design that you can come and play with. You, it would make great decoration for your table, or you could put it on, well, you could put it on a placemat, you could put it on a napkin, you could put it on a banner. You can do whatever you want to with it, but there's you a little design, and it's super simple to make. What, we did that in about 10 minutes, and nothing exciting, nothing real hard to do there. Now, there was one other thing. If you have your, if you have power pack, two that you can you can turn that little design into a vinyl design so i'm going to show you this one i'm still not getting it linda you're going to have to send me the design that you're talking about um if lettering is under the It's, so you're saying you have a design up here and you've got lettering down here and you want to get rid of the lettering? But let me know if I'm getting what you're asking and then I'll come back to that in just a minute. Um, Karen, all of the power packs are still available to my knowledge. Okay. Every, every power pack is still available. If you're getting that information, that is the incorrect information. They have not discontinued any power packs to my knowledge. I could be wrong, but I would be surprised since that is our best selling power pack. You're going to have to go to the divide by color. So divide by color, and then you're going to have to take the stitches out a point at a time. So your select point tool, and then you're going to have to kind of manipulate it. Okay, um, select point tool is the only way you can remove individual stitches unless you use the split stitches tool, which is not real um, precise. So let me see if I can kind of explain what I mean before I go forward and multiply. Let me see here. So we're just going to fake like you have a real design here. And give me just a second.
And in order to fake this, I'm going to export it into a different format. So let's go up here and go export and test. So now let's open. Oh, actually, we want to import. So let me come over here to import and let me go to my Facebook Live folder. And where's that test? Okay, so this is how it would come in somebody else's format. So we, we go up to the stitches tool and I would first divide by color. That way you're only manipulating a single color. Then you're wanting to, still don't understand exactly what you're wanting to do, but if I click on my text and I click on my select point tool, this gives me, let's change this color because I can't see through it. Select point tool. This allows you to remove individual stitches. So let's say I wanted to get rid of some of these under some of this under sewing. This these nodes are your stitches. These are actual stitch points. And as you press the delete key on your keyboard, it gets rid of those actual stitches. So so you're wanting to get rid of the the stitches up that are on. Okay. So let's say we come in here and highlight these. Oops, let's start at the bottom. Highlight those stitches right there. Press delete on your keyboard. Highlight those stitches right there. Press delete on your keyboard. And you'll notice I'm getting below before I start and then press delete on your keyboard. Now you need to be careful because if you get too far in there, you'll notice that I lost some stitches that might be important. So you do have to pay attention to where it's actually getting rid of it. You may want to just move them instead of deleting when you get close to the edge. And you may want to take these and kind of hide them. But if I were to switch the order, so you can see you're going to have a, a quite a few runs. What I would do here is, let's see if I can do this, split it point. wherever it's coming to someplace else. But this is not for the faint of heart. So let me see if there's one other way I could do this. Let's undo until I get back to that. Redo. Control Alt Shift. Should create, yep. Control Alt Shift can create a jump stitch. And then you pull that jump stitch where you want it to go. So once you've got the basic parts around, this will allow you to create jump stitches across. Got to pay attention to which direction they are. Okay. Uh, okay, you should be able to figure out what you need based on what I just showed you because uh, you're, you've totally confused me now. You're wanting part of the design gone. You're wanting part of the letter gone. I'm not real sure what you want. So um, you're, you've kind of, you're, you've kind of lost me, Linda. So design is on top of the letter and not under the letter. Okay, good. So yeah, so uh, I, that's you're getting into deep, deep diving of, of intricacies of a design. So I, I'm, I, I've shown you both ways. You can get rid of part of the design. You can get rid of part of the letter. That the select point tool is the way to go usually, and Control Alt Shift will allow you to create a jump stitch. Okay, um, let me go back over to BES four and show you the other thing I wanted to show you. And we are going to 
stop after this. But let's say we wanted a matching vinyl design for this. This is not a, you cannot do this in blue. You would need to have power pack um, two in order for this to work. Okay. So what we would do is I'm going to take our, these, this design right here. And we're going to go to our tools tab. Actually, let's see if it'll let us do all of it. Control A, tools tab, and we're going to say convert, and we're going to convert it to artwork. And so you'll notice how it converted all of my um, little designs here to artwork. It did not do my text because that is not an artwork text, okay? Now, you'll notice I have double sections. So I'm going to come and make that not happen. So let's undo and come down here and take out anything that is not a fill or a column. So we're going to take out all of these little pieces and press delete. Anything that's not a fill or a column. And then I'll show you a workaround for the text. And evidently, when you have a bunch of these, it's easier to start from scratch than it is to do this whole kink caboodle, but we'll do the whole kink caboodle. I did this with only one guy. But we're almost there. So now let's press delete on our keyboard and all that one's gone. So let's go down here to our blue one. And anything that's not a fill or a column, we want to get rid of. Not as many to work with, not as many to mess with in the bigger sections. It was all those stars that were having fun. Because they, those are the tie-offs for them. And since we're doing, we're going to change it to artwork, we don't need the tile. So let's do the same thing for our reds. And it should not take that big of a deal. Just leave your columns. Okay, we're about there. Almost done. There we go. Press delete on our keyboard. Now, if we select those designs, so let's grab our, that whole section, convert to artwork, it should do a cleaner job. So you notice it did do a much cleaner job. So now let's do this little trick right here. Go to the Arrange tab and Transform Artwork and Weld. Actually, I don't want to weld them all, so let's ungroup. Ungroup. So I want to take these little pieces right now. If you want to sit, if you want to cut all of those, that's fine. But I made all of my, I made my, these little pieces right here, all one. So I welded those. Don't want that one. I want this one, this one, and this one. I'm holding my control key down and we're just pressing the weld key. Press the weld key. And like I said, you could do all of them if you want. I'm just kind of being little lazy here. I didn't want to have to cut out three pieces and layer three pieces on. Just my preference, but you can do whatever you want. If you like cutting them, if you want to cut all three of them, go forth and multiply. Now the stars are a little trickier, so eat, but you'll notice each star is right here. So let's come in here and grab that star and we're going to weld it. But you'll notice it has a little dot in the center of it. So once you have welded your star, where did it go? I'm going to just going to select it. Oh, there it is. And we're going to break it apart. So notice now it's got two parts wherever it went. There it is. Then you can get rid of the little dibble inside. Well, let's go ahead and weld all of our stars together and then we'll go find them. Okay, so one more. All of my stars are now welded. So let's go in and break, break them apart and get rid of the little dibble inside. 
I'll do that in just a second. I'm just going to break them all apart first. Break apart. Break apart. And I already broke that one apart, didn't I? Yep. Okay. So now we should see little, the little dibbles inside. You should be able to just get rid of those as you go. So plus sign, hit that little piece. Plus sign, hit that little piece. Press delete on your keyboard. Now you're left with your pieces. Okay, so let's change this right here to an artwork font. So if I come here and put a check mark in front of true type font, I can then change it from column to artwork and pick a different font. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone. Let's see what we've got. We want just a block font. So let's look at our arrow key and see if we can't find us just a little block font that we like. How about that one? Where did it go? And we can go back to our text tool, home text, and grab that and squeeze it in. That's a little bit big. So what did we have? We had 0.39 or 0.35. There we go. So now you want to cut it out of adhesive or heat transfer vinyl. That is up to you. But if you're going to go to adhesive vinyl, you can select all items right here and choose layering alignment and you can choose where you want your alignment to go it'll space things out apart for you and you'll notice that it gives you alignment marks for each section as well as a um, weeding box around it so you can get everything done at one time okay so that one is a fun one it's easy to make things match up and i think you'll enjoy it if you're planning on doing heat transfer vinyl do not do the layering alignment. You Or you could do the layering alignment. Just take your squares of matching things up out. And then um, you can send it all. Mirror your design and send it all at one time. Uh, yeah. It, and it's good possibility. It's S-A-B-E-S-L-E-T-U-P-G-1. I mean, it's. we They named it something really kind of bizarre. But. I double check that and see, okay, um, because they should still have it in stock. I won't swear to that. I did hear a rumor that they might, but I think it's a mistake. So um, it, if you find it, that is our most popular power pack. I would be shocked that we would let, let go of it. So, all right, guys, if there are no other questions today, I am going to, to call it a day. Ta-ta for now. Um, and sorry for getting over some people's heads today that sometimes when we answer a question we get deep in the woods and things that we don't want to go so i try not to go too deep but linda hopefully you got what you needed from what i was talking about um i did see i believe shirley you said you sent in a question yes that one's more than i can that's an entire section of its own and i you're going to have to send me what you're talking about or is edna um what you're doing Edna, I think would work. There's probably an easier way to do what you've done. I have a method of creating a template for quilting that I, maybe I'll share that next week. Um, but I don't have, I'm not looking at a quilting book. I've created my own custom quilting, but I'll show you how I did that. So maybe that will help you in what you're planning on doing. So uh, it just was more than I could get to today. I've got too many irons in the fire flipping them back and forth. So um, we're, we're trying to get everything going on. I mean, there's, there's a lot going on right now. So I do apologize. Um, all right, guys, you, you all have a great rest of the day and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye.